morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is again the Lord has blessed us to assemble this place of worship. And we thank God for even a fifth Sunday morning. Amen. God is still good. He's still making ways out of no ways. And I'm just thanking for all that He's doing right now in all of our lives. Amen. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noose and pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Certainly the Lord is in His holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before Him. I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Certainly this is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad therein. And to Him be all the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's a blessing again to come before this camera and to declare God's word. Amen. I do hope and trust that all of you had a blessed Thanksgiving. And certainly you enjoyed yourselves with your family. And hopefully you did not overdo it and you didn't overcrowd yourselves. Amen. So we still are under the pandemic and there are many things that are still happening in our world. And I was studying this week, I was looking in the book of Romans, uh, chapter 13, uh, verses 11 through 14. Of course, as I always say and state it this way, the whole chapter is rich with things that concerned you and I. Amen. So I'll be looking at Romans, New Testament book, Paul's letter to the church at Rome, uh, the 13th chapter. And we'll be looking at that today, and we want to share some things with you concerning the church and America. Amen. The church and America. Let me say thank you to uh, the person responsible for keeping our water and our juice and our study for as we come uh, to deliver our message thing. We get thirsty every so often, so we thank you all uh, for putting juice in here for us that we're able to replenish as we continue to try to deliver the Word of God. Amen. Amen. So uh, let's, let's, let's get into our message. Short one, not that, not that long today, but I do hope that something will be said in this message that will cause us to think and, and certainly to wake up. Amen. So in Romans, the 13th chapter, I'm going to look, I'll be looking at verses 11 through 14. Verses 11 through 14. In Romans 13, beginning at verse 11, these words you'll find. Paul says, and that, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Amen. Thus in our scripture reading for this morning, Romans 13, verses 11 through 14. And I'll be talking about today church, churches in America. Subject is time to wake up. Bear with me, Father. In the name of Jesus, it's again that thus thy humble servant come before thee. And in thy presence, O God, to thank thee for all you have done. Master, in that you're still doing. Thank you, God, for all those blessings that you've been so kind to shower about all of our pathway. Father, we thank you most of all for Jesus Christ, your divine, eternal Son. The Lord is him that you gave this world, it's through him we would have life and have it more abundantly. Father, we Paul to say we thank you. Thank you, God, for this week journey, how that you blessed us and kept us in your care. You sheltered us from the seen and unseen danger. Oh, Lord, our God, we Paul to say we thank you. 
Thank you, Lord God, even for the early rising this morning. Clothed us in our right mind. Thank you for the activities of our limbs, the blood that still run warm within our veins. We thank you, O oh God, for sustaining this food, raiment, and shelter. Thank you, Master, for providing in thy own way. O oh Lord, we realize that all of our help come from you, God, that made heaven and earth. So, Father, we said thank you. Thank you most of all for Jesus Christ, your divine, eternal Son. Father, you gave him to this world, and it's through him, God, that we will have life, have it more abundantly. And Father, we pause to say we thank you for Jesus Christ, who is our prophet and our priest, who is the intercessor, the one, O oh God, that stands between man and thee. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus, knowing that he can make intercession for us when we call upon your holy and righteous name. O oh Lord, as we come, Father, we beg for forgiveness of all of our sin, and we pray for continued divine strength. Remain faithful, steadfast, unmovable, do you will. O oh Lord, as we bow here on these sacred grounds, and even among these consecrated walls, we pray, God, that thou would help us again. Please come with thy Holy Spirit and use us, take us down on a set. Let us be able to preach, to teach your unadulterated gospel. And God, I pray that thou would once again bring to memory that which you called me to study. Oh God, we pray for clarity of speech. We rightly divide your word of truth. And oh God, I pray for every listening ear, every eye that's able to see. I pray, God, that your word will bless some soul today. If there be any, oh God, out of your heart of faith that who do not know you, on a personal level as their personal Savior. I pray, God, that I would save a soul right now. Save that person, oh God, who may be near as hell today. Lord, I pray that I would save them so much so that they'll have a testimony knowing that they once was lost, but now they're found. Father, I pray your blessing will fall upon this church and all churches, every listening here, all over this broad land and country. Master, but we've come to the end of our journey. I can't say no longer. We would, thou would receive each of us in your kingdom without the loss of one. We would have eternal joy, peace, our God. Rest in thee. Master, it's in the name of Jesus, your divine, powerful Son, that we humbly bow, beg of your deep blessing, all which is in Christ's sake. Our souls says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for praying with and for us. And we thank God, as I said, for this chance to come before the camera and to talk a little bit about churches in America, it's time to wake up from Romans 13, verses 11 to 14. Amen. I thought about this one. I, I see so much still going on in and around our world, especially in high places. And I want the church to wake up and know that we are in some crisis here. And so, so, so in the introduction of my message this morning, uh, in the context of the very passage where God speaks to us about our relationship to government and the leaders of government, where he tells us to honor our country and its leaders as well as honor God. We find these four verses, amen, amen. We find these four verses. Paul is conveying an urgency around the political situation of his day. He's telling the Roman church that it is a critical period and a unique season. The time has come to wake up. Paul is urging the church to arise from spiritual slumber. In other words, they, they are awake but still slumbering and sleeping in what they're looking at, what's going on in and around their world. In verse 12, Paul tells us to change our battle clothes. In verse 13, we are to we are to we are told to change our lifestyle. And in verse 14, he tells us we need to change in our faith if we do not believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. We we must change these things, change our clothes, change our lifestyle. And if your faith is not in Jesus Christ, that needs to change also. It is time to wake up. All of these statements were made to the church in Rome back in his day. 
But in our day, these same words hold true for the churches at large in our day. I'm sure if we look closer at our situation today, we'll find some of the same problem that the church in Rome had uh, identical to what's happening in America. So, so yes, we need to wake up from slumber or sleep. Amen. And, and see the deterioration, amen, of spiritual morals and governmental breakdown in our society. You, you must see that. Amen. I have a few points I would like to address this morning and hope that it will cause the church to take heed and wake up of what so wake up to what Satan is trying to infiltrate the church with. He's trying to cause it to uh, to continue on a downward spiral. Amen. He don't want the church to be successful, nor does he want the church to be triumphant. Uh, but I got news for him today. The church is going to be successful and it will triumph. Amen. Also, if we wake up in time, our survival is guaranteed in Christ Jesus. So, so let's look at what we need to do. Amen. The first point here is wake up. We are in a cultural struggle. We're in a cultural struggle. Everybody don't know what cultural struggles are. You got people in your community that's that's trying to to play different things in their lives, and they're they're, they're, they're getting the culture all screwed up. Amen. That that really is a struggle in our nation. <clears throat> this has been said for many years, but but because some of us may have been asleep, we need to wake up. The church in America has remained quiet over too many morals and social issues. Nobody speaks out about, you know, our young people going astray. Nobody speaks out about how this homosexual thing is constantly progressing. Nobody speaks about, you know, how men are lying and how men are walking contrary to the will of God. Uh, there are men in our nation who would prefer <clears throat> that we stay asleep. Amen. But I want to wake the church up. Uh, they tell us to be silent, but, but we need to stand up for the word of God. <clears throat> Why? Because the nation is at stake and we are in a cultural war. Everybody now seems to want us to do like they do. But children of God, the Bible has already said to us, be in the world, but not of the world. Amen. We got to live in it, but we don't have to do like the world doing. Amen. That, and that's another point here, and I got five of them that spit off this particular one. Wake up. We are in a spiritual war. Amen. We're in a spiritual culture. And the next one that, that, that spit off about five things here, we are in a spiritual war. We talk about authority. We talk about control. We talk about truth. We talk about future, and then we also talk about people and their eternity. So let's look at them. I gave you five of them. Amen. Let's look at we're in a spiritual war. We need to wake up. And since we are in a spiritual war, the spiritual war is over the nature of these five things. Number one, authority. Amen. God versus man. Who is going to be the authority in our nation? Uh, and, and somebody need to answer that. Uh, which one, God or man? Uh, and I can tell you who's supposed to be, amen, the authority. It's supposed to be God. Uh, but it seems as though man is trying to take the place of God. Uh, we are in a spiritual war over the nature of authority. Uh, most of us want things to go our way without the authority of the Word of God. But the Bible that I read and the Bible that I'm still reading has already told me that there's an example in 1 Samuel 15, verses 22 through 23. You should remember that story, but I give you the gist of it. Samuel, the prophet, uh, back in, in, in 1 Samuel, he spoke to a man by the name of King Saul. And Saul was the first king of Israel. Uh, he spoke to him for disobeying God. Uh, here's what Samuel said. Uh, 
He said, and said unto him, Has the Lord as greater delight in bread offering? and sacrifice. I don't have time to go through the whole story. But he says, as in obedient to the voice of the Lord. He asked him that question. Has the Lord a great a delight in bread offering and sacrifice? As in obedience to the voice of the Lord. And Samuel says to Saul, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to heed a brother is better than the fat of ram. In verse 23, he said, For rebellion is as serious as the sin of divine nation. Divine nation here means fortune telling. Somebody probably looked at their horoscope this morning. But I got news for you. The horoscopes cannot tell your future. Amen. These are people who, who play on, on your emotions. They play on trying to let you see what's going to happen the next hour or the next day. But only one somebody know what's going to happen uh, the next hour, the next day. His name is Jesus. Um, he already know what your future is. Uh, and so, so, so Paul, uh, Saul says to, I mean, Samuel says to Saul, uh, and disobedience is as serious as false religion and idolatry. Uh, amen. He also says for rebellion is as serious as the sin of divine nature uh, of fortune telling. Because he said, he said to Saul, listen Saul, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also rejected you as king. In other words, he got fired. He couldn't do his job. He could not stick to what God had told him to do. And don't you see that in America today? We got men in high places, but still will not listen to God. Wake up, y'all. <clears throat> we are in a spiritual war. <laughs> and the, the second one here in these five spiritual war tricks here <laughs> is control. <laughs> you know, everybody want to be in control. <laughs> God versus Satan. <laughs> Who is going to control this nation? <laughs> it ought to be God. <laughs> but I see Satan has a strong hold on it. <laughs> it has nothing to do with political parties. It, it has nothing to do with any social or moral issue. It is a spiritual battle. You should know by now that we are in a spiritual warfare. Satan is battling hard for your soul. <laughs> only to destroy our relationship with God. <laughs> Can I say right here, <laughs> you need to wake up <laughs> and stop allowing the devil <laughs> to control your life. <laughs> Amen. He, he knows how to paint things. <clears throat> he knows how to make the picture very pretty. <laughs> but it's nothing but a camouflage. <laughs> he makes it pretty <laughs> to entice your thinking. <laughs> he makes it pretty <laughs> on a false hope. He makes it seem that it's all right to do what you do. But at the same time, God is saying, why don't you wake up? Look around. Look to me and live. Look at me and I can make a way for you. You know what I found out about Satan? Satan will lead you into something, but it will never get you out. And you know, you need to hold on to God through Jesus Christ, who is our only hope in making it through this dark world of sin. And so control is something that the devil fights hard for. If he can control your thinking, if he can control your emotion, if he can control your pocketbook, then he has you where he wants you at. And believe me, every time you give him control, he takes you a step backward. But I I declare to you today that if you would only let the Lord lead you, you'll find out that God can take you through. There's an old hymnologist who sang, let Jesus lead you. Let him lead you all the way from earth to glory. And the third point here, when we look at our spiritual war, 
We got the truth, the Bible versus opinion. Everybody got an opinion, sure, but what is truth? It's found in the Word of God. People's opinion matter, but all opinions give way to the truth of God's Word. You see, you might have an opinion about the Scripture, but the Scripture will, will, will reveal itself. Matter of fact, the scripture will reveal itself. It don't need somebody else's opinion. Amen. If you read it as God so stated it, and then you'll find out that the scripture will stand on the truth. In John Gospel, the 8th chapter, the 32nd verse, Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You see, if you know the truth. The truth can free you from making bad decisions or making your own opinion. Matter of fact, I believe the preacher said, lean not to your own understanding in the book of Proverbs, but lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, and He will direct your path. And to really know the truth, we need to know Jesus Christ on a personal level. For Jesus said in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's the truth of the Word of God. If you get there any other kind of way, you're a thief and a robber. The truth always, my friend, outweighs our opinion. And so I went through three of them. Yeah, the thought. God versus man and control. God versus Satan. Now, I don't know who controlling your life, but I want the Lord to control my life. <clears throat> and he is controlling my life. Amen. And then the truth. Good God Almighty. The truth versus opinion. The truth is what will save you. A people's opinion can't save you, but the truth can save you. The truth is wrapped up in Jesus Christ. Yeah, because he said, I am the way. The truth, did you get that? <clears throat> In the light that no man comes unto the Father but by me. And the truth always outweigh our opinion. My fourth point before I get to my fifth one. Future, revival versus ruin. You see, we got to look to the future. And in order to get to the future, if you're sleeping, you got to wake up and start in the future. Again, that is not a political issue. That is a spiritual issue. When I look at my future, it's not in man. My future is in Jesus Christ. The church in America need a spiritual spiritual move of God. Uh, that's the answer for the nation. Uh, nothing else can solve it uh, but the move of God. Uh, I believe God Holy Spirit uh, can revive us again. Uh, you might say, well, how can God revive me uh, when I've gone so far away from him? Uh, well, I got a few people I want you to talk to. Uh, I want you to ask the prodigal son. Uh, you remember him, don't you? Uh, about revival. Uh, he's talked about in our uh, St. Luke Gospel. He's talked about how that he left home and went out and did righteous living. But the Bible also said when he came to himself, when he found out how wrong he was, he had a revival in the hawk pen. He said, I'm going to get up and I'm going back to my father's house. In my daddy's house, I got clothes there. In my daddy's house, I got a decent meal there. I'm in a hog pen getting ready to try to chew on a husk that the pig ate the grain off. I don't need this. Not only that, 
uh, but I hadn't had a bath in a while. Uh, I believe my daddy got some running water uh, where I can take a bath. Uh, ask the prodigal son uh, about revival. Uh, and then, then that, that's somebody else, Jim. Uh, I need you to talk to. Uh, ask the Hebrew children uh, in the fiery furnace uh, in that book called Daniel. Uh, you ought to talk to them a little bit uh, and let them give you that testimony. Uh, I think about Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, I think how uh, they were thrown in a fiery furnace. Uh, but revival meeting uh, uh, broke out in the fire. Uh, the Bible said uh, when old Shadrach, uh, Meshach was down there, uh, Nebuchadnezzar looked in. Uh, he said, I knew I put three in, uh, but I see a fourth man uh, walking around in the fiery furnace. Uh, and that's not revival. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Somebody can even tack on what is called deliverance. But when you get delivered, you ought to have a revival. When the Lord lift you up, when God saved you, when he saved your wretched soul, when he pull you out of the muck and mire, a claim, you ought to start a revival. You ought to holler out how I got over. My soul looked back and wondered how I got over. And you know you ought to come to the conclusion that it was God uh, that brought me over. It was God uh, that brought me through. It was God uh, that stayed by my side. It was God that rescued me when I was lost in sin. It was God uh, that picked me up. It was God that set my soul on fire. Well, I see something else I got somebody else. If you want to know about revival, you'll ask Paul and Silas in the Philippian jail. You know, the Bible said the boys got locked up, but at midnight they began to sing and somebody began to pray. They tell me that they sang and prayed so hard in their own personal revival that God shook the jail house, uh, shook the doors open, uh, and let me tell y'all one thing, uh, if you really wake up, uh, you will have a revival uh, in your own soul, uh, if you really wake up, uh, you will tell that child uh, to change her way, uh, if you really wake up, uh, you tell that young boy uh, to straighten his life up, uh, if you really wake up, uh, you will get in a hurry uh, and run toward God's house, uh, when you really wake up, uh, you will praise the Lord. And never be ashamed when you wake up. You know who to praise and what to praise when you wake up. You know that God He is able to see you through. You gotta wake up. I got one more here. I see something else here. Even though Paul and Silas they had a revival. Amen. The Hebrew boys had a revival. The prodigal son had his own personal revival. Well, let's see here. We see here there are many more that I could call up, but I got to pull up out of here. I got one more point. You see, when your mind gets stayed on Jesus, Bible reader, you can have a revival. This should be sufficient to start a revival in your heart. So wake up, church, and let us not go to ruin, but be the light shining in a dark world. You said, well, how can we shine? We can't come to church. We can't come to the assembly. But I got news for you. Uh, this church is on a building that accommodate us. But the church is supposed to be in your heart. The church is supposed to be in your soul. The church is supposed to be in your mind. You ought to have a sanctuary in your bosom that you can call up glory. You can start praying. You can start lifting your hand. Well, a last point is people and their eternity. Heaven versus hell. 
where you want to spend your days when you leave here, where you want to go when you close your eyes for the last time on the scenery. Well, the course of our nation should remind us that America and the world need Jesus Christ far more is at stake than political or cultural preferences. Eternity for every single person hang in the balance, which is more important, of being saved, of following this world. My choice is staying sane. I wouldn't try to change my citizenship for this world system. I will be like the five wise virgins who kept enough all in that vessel. In Matthew 25, a chapter and verses 1 through 13. Don't you know if you're praying attention to the signs of the time, the bridegroom is on his way for his bride. Oh, yes, the prayer to God is that the bride won't be sleeping and sin and miss the bridegroom. I want to be awake when the bridegroom comes. And just to show them, as I'm sitting here today, the bridegroom is on his way. I come to tell you, church, to wake up. Wake up, America, and see what's happening. All the sin in our world is changing our world. This great pandemic uh, that we got going on. They talk about a spam. They talk about a needle. They talk about a shot. But that's no guarantee. I want you to know the only shot you need is a shot of Holy Ghost. And let the law cleanse your body. Sure, it might work. And then it might not work. But I come to tell you, I've already taken my shot. I got a dose of the Holy Ghost. I got a dose of the Spirit of God. And ever since I got that dose, I've been awake for Jesus Christ. And I want you to know it's time to wake up because the bridegroom is on his way. And sitting there, you want to be ready when he comes. And so we thank God. Paul said it's high time that we wake out of sleep. Yeah, wake out of sleep for now is our salvation. Nearer than when we believe. Jesus is soon to come. I want you to know he's on his way. And certainly, church, we got to get it right because you don't want to be sleeping. I'm not talking about like you had your body going to sleep. You don't want to be asleep in your sin and constantly living as if things are fine. It's not fine. It, the night is far spent. Praise the Lord. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. He says to us, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and in the, all those things talks about sexual desires and those things, what you want to do. Amen. But I come to tell you it's time to wake up. Wake up out of your sin. Wake up out of the things that's hindering you from being what you're supposed to be in Christ Jesus. For the saints of God, thank you for staying awake. For the saints of God, stay awake. Be alert. Live like today is the last day you live on earth. That's the way you live. Live like this is your last day on earth. This is your last time on earth. That's the way we live. And when we live like that, we live in expectation of Jesus Christ coming again. Like I heard an old preacher said, live as like Christ rose this morning and coming back this evening. Huh? He's coming, y'all. And I want us to know that we got to be awake and wake up to what we see Satan throwing all around us. Making things look like it's normal. Everything is fine now. It's not fine. It's getting more and more corrupt every day. God is telling us, wake up. I'm soon to come. And I don't know about you, but I don't want him to find me sleeping. But I want to be awake. I want to have enough spiritual oil in my vessel. That when he come, my lamp will be burning so that I can hear the bridegroom when the, when the time or when it when rings out, the bridegroom cometh. I want to be ready to go back with Christ. Saints, thank you again. But hear what I'm telling you. 
time is winding up. Wake up. The bridegroom is coming. Our salvation draw nigh. It's closer than what a lot of folk believe. And I believe Jesus is soon to come. Matter of fact, the more and more I look at this Bible and read it, heaven look a whole lot better than this earth look to me. Amen. Who would want to go to a place where there's no more dying, no more crying, no more sickness, all this stuff? Who would want to go to a place where you can, where you have to worry about sin, where nobody treating you wrong and doing you wrong, breaking in, killing and stealing? Who would want to go to a place where none of that goes on? I want to go there. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening to me this morning. I do hope something you said to prick your attention to cause you to draw, draw closer to Christ. Because time is, as I said, winding on down. I want to pray today for all of our sick and our shut in. Less fortunate, well, less fortunate, those who are struggling and those who perhaps right at the crossroads of life trying to figure out how in the world am I going to make it? What am I going to do? Well, I, I'll tell you this. It's going to get bad before it gets better. But I know a God that works in the midst of the worst crisis. He is able to see you all the way through. So bow with me. Father, thank you, Lord, for these moments that you have granted us share word with these thy people. Lord, I pray your word has fallen on good ground. I pray your word, Lord God, has done what you said it will do. It will not return unto your boy. Oh Lord, I pray your word will bless some soul today. Help them to know, God, that you're soon to come. And Father, I pray your word Lift somebody who may be down and out, knowing that if they keep looking up, you're going to come by and by. Father, I pray for the church now. Ask your God to bless Mount Zion. Every member, one by one, less fortunate, well as the fortunate. God, I pray for the sick and the shut in, those in hospitals and nursing homes and even in their own home, Lord, I pray that Thou would touch them. Father, some man, some woman, some girl, boy, body might be racked in pain. Father, I ask You in Jesus, O oh God, to touch their feeble body. Father, I pray in Jesus, O oh Lord, that Thou would continue to strengthen this household of faith. For we need You in these trying and evil days. Nothing, God, we can do without You, but with You. We believe that all things are possible if we only believe. Father, I pray for those who are troubled. I pray for those, of oh God, who are burdened down. I pray for bereaved families everywhere. We ask you, God, to bless them and let them know that earth still has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Oh, Lord, our God, I pray, Father, that you continue to lead and guide us the way you have us to go. I pray for some sinner man, woman, boy, or girl. I pray that I would save a soul today. Lord, we need you in this trying and evil day. Thank you, God, for what you've already done. Lord, you blessed us even to lay down last night, to rise early this morning with a reasonable portion of health and strength. You blessed us, O oh God, with food, raiment, and shelter. You bless us with the means of travel that we could travel over the dangerous highway in our own personal automobiles. You blessed us even with jobs. And some who don't have jobs, yet you still bless them. And Father, I pray for that man who's struggling, that woman who's struggling. I pray, God, for those who may not have no food on their table. I pray, God, that a way would be made. They'll be able to have food on their table. Then, Father, I pray. Oh, Lord, for those that out of the ark of safety. Lord God, would you save a soul today? Master, I pray for our presidents. I pray, God, for those in high places who make decisions affecting our daily life. 
Oh Lord our God, I pray that I would cause man to do what's right, pleasing in your divine eyesight. Let him know, God, that you're still in control, in charge of our lives. And oh God, when we have come to the end of our journey, we'll not be able to stay any longer. We beg you, Master, to receive each of us in your kingdom without the loss of one. We will have eternal joy, peace, our God. Rest in thee, Father. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that I humbly bow. Beg of you these blessing all the for Christ's sake. This is our prayer for name with others. Our soul says amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for praying with us and for us. And we thank God for this chance to share with you a word from the Lord concerning Romans 13. Because you need to go back and read the very beginning of Romans 1, uh, 13. Because it talks about let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The power that be are ordained of God. So we see what's happening with that. We know that God is in control. He's in charge first. Everybody else is under Him. So I pray that something has been said to draw you closer to Christ and to wake up and pay attention to what's happening in our world. So this concludes my message for this morning. And once again, I want to thank God for, for my son. And also we thank God for the church. This is Pastor Lewis A. Watson, Mount Zion Baptist Church, in Red Island, Virginia. Mr. Lewis A. Watson, who is our music minister and our technical person who makes this possible that we're able to come and broadcast to you. So once again, we pray the Lord will bless you for what you stand in need of. I pray His richest blessing on you and your family. You're going out, you're coming in. I pray that the Lord will bless you. Matter of fact, I ask, I speak blessing unto you right now. He'll bless your family. He'll bless your health and strength. He'll bless you going out your company. He'll bless you on your job. He'll bless you if you don't have a job. He'll make the means for you to get a job. I pray also that he will bless you in such a way that you have good health, good strength, a good clean mind. I pray the Lord will bless your community and your home, place where you stay. Love will be there in your home, between husband and wives, children, sons and daughters. Once again, until we meet again before this camera, this is Pastor Lewis and Watson. God bless you. Until we meet again, we love you, and we thank God for you. Amen and amen.